I'm sorry. Because you are that, you are capable. You are gifted, and you are so unique. All of the things that you may hate about yourself are your strengths. It's okay to be soft. It's okay to be opinionated. It's okay to be different. And it's so okay to just be The world awaits to receive you. Now, Let's get into this judge that has something to say to the killer of young Dolph murder. Now, there's a lot of celebrities that's in and out of the courtroom. So, yes, we do keep you up to date on. Hold on a second. We got to act on the background. We do keep you up to date on some of the celebrities who actually passed away. So this is the young Dolph. If y'all do remember, this gentleman passed away about two years ago. And this was, I, I don't know if this was the father or the son, because in his particular case, allegedly someone saw him at a store, which was the father, and called the son to do the hit. So let's watch this little clip, what the judge has to say. They get a little saucy. That's the old man. Right? Um, I also shouldn't have to remind you that you're out on a bond that and the court has put you on some real serious or some real tight stipulations. Yes, ma'am. At this point, the court feels like you're playing. Mm. And you know why he playing? Because allegedly he's out here giving interviews, being a whole dummy, okay? But people love to go viral, so the judge is getting on his ass, and I don't even understand why he got bonds. Look at her, look at her thing, y'all. She said, I ain't gonna be like that judge that get that get, get jumped on. Like, I'm a damn basketball who she said, I ain't getting no COVID and I ain't getting jumped on. What the hell is this she got around her? She need to knock it the hell off, okay? But anyway, back to this basically, this young man or the grandpa, the daddy was going around actually trying to do interviews. I don't know if he's trying to make money for his lawyer or whatever, but again, the judge let him walk out of the courtroom with this young man doing stupidity. So we're gonna keep our eye on this young Dolph murder case just to find out what's the outcome. We're not gonna follow it as deep as we follow the other cases, y'all, because it is too much, but we're gonna see the nonsense and the Mick Rigger Monroe that goes on. Also, Pay attention. When we talk about these court cases, they're going on across the United States in different different courtrooms, different types of judges and lawyers that you see. So I want you guys to see how these people actually um, interact, how the proceedings go, how more remarkably different they are or how similar they are. Because nowadays, like I said, it's very important for the general public to understand the law. Because after 9 11 and the Patriot Act, y'all know a whole lot has changed. And if you don't know how important it is to know law, now you know. Okay. So let's get into our next. 
I was going to talk about Chris Brown, but it's not that important. He do got a court case. I'm just going to talk about it. Um, he has a, a, a maid that is actually suing him for um, back money and other things. So we're going to get into that later on. It's not very important tonight, but we're going to get also into the YM, YM, YNW Melly case just a little bit. Not too much. Because um, this guy, this young man, I think I think he's guilty. I'm just I'm just gonna say it. I, I'm I'm biased. I don't know why my soul tell me he's guilty, but we just gonna put his little thing on the screen. Um, allegedly, he had some of his people testify as witnesses of his behavior, and they put him outside of the car. OK, they put his phone inside of the car and said, allegedly, he got out of the car and went into another car and then the shooting happened. So let's just listen to this, because people are thinking, based on some of this testimony, that YMW Melly may have saved his, his friend. It was an amazing. So let's play this. Hold on, we can get it started again. Day 16 was an amazing day for Melly with his friend testifying in court. And here is why. His friend came into court to clarify what happened the night of the murders. He was one of the people that stepped into the red car that night. He stated that they left the studio, most of them under the influence of alcohol and weed, in two cars as shown on this video. Most of the people fell asleep in the red car, but he was woken up when the car stopped and Melly switched cars. The red car with Melly in it drove to Melly's house where they stayed that night. The next morning they woke up with the news about the murders. He stated Melly wasn't in the car during the murders, but only his phone was because he lost it earlier that night. This was a strong testimony for Melly's team, but there still is a great chance he is lying. What do you think? Make sure to subscribe for more on the YNW trial. Day six. And this little boy, 16 years old, it said, did YMW Melly friends save him in court on his 16th? Oh, it's his 16th day in court. I'm so sorry. I'm about to say, is this boy 16 years old? He looked like it. He looked like a little 16 year old gremlin. Look, every time I see him, I say that. Look at this man. Look at this young man. Look at him. Look at him. This is who we look up to. I'm sorry. So, anyway, this is some of the testimony that sometimes can come in the game and kind of throw a crick in it. So, who is to determine if this young man is lying? Um, so the prosecutors is going to have to do a better job trying to figure out how to prosecute that young man. So I want to give y'all a heads up of what's going on on his case, because I did tell y'all I was going to keep my eye on that. I don't think I can watch it barbatim like I'm doing with the YSL trial. And now definitely into this Fannie Willis trial. And I, I feel some type of way because they keep on, um, playing um the witness testimony over and over like it's live so every day i go looking and shit is the same testimony playing over and over and i'm like what the hell going on tell them to stop doing that and get on with the proceedings because i'm getting a little annoyed okay try to figure out what's going on miss fanny she going to jail she going to jail i she just crooked y'all y'all know how i feel about fulton county and it's not specifically to her, but once, you know, you put all the pieces together and you see how things is just crookedness. If you got a conscience and a moral compass, you know that people need to be just out of their positions because this is the reason why our system is fucked up the way it is. And I'm just going to keep it real. OK, now let's get into uh, YSL defense attorney arrested. What is this? YSL defense attorney is arrested on gang charges. Now, this I don't believe this has anything to do with this current case, but it has to do with her actions. And it's showing you some of the crookedness that's going on around. Now, I don't know if she particularly just practiced in Fulton County, but Fulton County is a motherfucker, y'all. I done told y'all, don't play around with Fulton County. Don't play around. Don't, don't get locked up in there, nothing. They will do what they want to do when they want to do it, okay? So let's play this real quick. Um, no, I don't want to play the live stream of the video. I don't, cause I don't know if this is. Who. Aren't they providing? Oh, oh, uh, this was uh, another part of the the court proceedings that wasn't very important, but we talked about before. Basically, one of the uh, public defenders want to make a little bit more money again. So this is her argument. But anyway, let's get into this. Why is self defense attorney arrested 
on gang charges. This is February 16th. The first um, attorney, Nicole Thing, who represented defendant Tariq Murden in YSL Rico gang charges, has been arrested on gang-related charges. Thegan was taken into custody by Atlanta police on Friday, February 16th, following allegations she contacted a suspect in September 27, 2022, shooting of two men. Investigators received information that Nicole contacted a suspect in the shooting, advising him of active warrant for his arrest. The Atlanta Police Department wrote in the statement. Fergan provided information she had learned during the preliminary hearing related to the shooting and advised the suspect to dispose of his phone as police were going to arrest him. Investigators confirmed Fergan, um, Fegan, I do apologize, was not representing the suspect that she called. So I think I do have a clip of Miss Crazy Fanny. Fanny Wilson's up there standing up like, yeah, bitch. I'm not, excuse my language. I'm sorry. Miss Crookedness think that she about to get somebody else. So I'm about to, <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. This That's how Miss Fanny is. That's how she talk. Y'all be, y'all know, shit. She showed y'all how aggressive she is that's how she is okay let's play this little clip for you guys of her talking about the arrest of this uh her fellow colleague i would assume let's get to it another busy day in the fulton county court as more witnesses take the stand and district attorney fanny willis's no. disqualification hearing what her father told the courts about attorney on charges she but first at four authorities have arrested a criminal defense attorney on charges she told a murder suspect to throw away evidence good afternoon and thanks so much for joining us for fox 5 news at four i'm christine spiro fox 5's tyler fingert has been working on this breaking story throughout the day today mm. tyler is live now with more what can you tell us yeah, Christine, good afternoon to you. One of the defendants who represents a, a defendant, excuse me, one of the attorneys representing a defendant in the YSL gang case is now in trouble herself. And I've learned that she faces a gang charge herself. This is Nicole Fegan. She was arrested today in Gwinnett County, stemming from a September 2022 deadly shooting in downtown Atlanta, not far from Centennial Olympic Park. Fegan is not accused of shooting anyone, but Atlanta police say investigators learned she contacted a suspect in the shooting mm. and told him there was a warrant for his arrest. Investigators say she learned about that during a court hearing related to the shooting. Police say she told the suspect who they aren't identifying to dispose of his phone as police were going to arrest him. Detectives say Fegan was not representing the suspect that she called. She faces two charges, participation in criminal street gang activity and solicitation to tamper with evidence. Fegan represents YSL defendant Tinquarius Mender. Besides Vegan, police have also arrested Keontae Davis in this case. It's unclear if he's the suspect she called, but officers took him into custody last February after he was pulled over for rolling through a red light. This is body camera video of that arrest. Davis is accused of taking part in the deadly shooting, which went from an argument to gunfire. One person was killed and another was injured in that case. He faces at least two charges, including murder. Back out here live, we have been working to get... Let's stop right there now. Let's just back up to this part. This is how they caught the uh, suspect. A simple pullover. Talking about you ran the light. That's how they get your ass out here. They lie and say you ran the light. So I'm not saying he didn't, but I'm just want highlight what Grace Levi always talk about. Be careful when you're driving because that's how they get you. So this guy happened to have a warrant. Now, this is the same gentleman that this lawyer tipped off. This to me says a whole can of worms can be open. Okay, let me find out. We about to Rico charge these police as well. The way Rico work, you might as well get the police out there that's out there working with the criminals because there's a lot of them out there, and it probably ain't just her. You already know. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So let me let's keep our eye on how many more cases come out now that they want to. Fulton County is literally doing everything that has been unprecedented. And I want you guys to know, just because it's happening here in Atlanta and in Fulton County, don't think that it doesn't affect you in your county, in your state, because the way law is set up in America, it's set on president. So they do go to case laws in their state to set up presidents for their arguments, but they can go to any court that's on their level 
on a state level that has a ruling pertaining to their particular case. Let's get it. Rico all over the place, okay? I'll be try I, I may have to really watch what I say and do around this motherfucker because they getting everybody. So as we see, Miss um Nicole Freegan is um yeah being indicted for everything except for Rico right at this point. So shout out to Fulton County, shout out to the crookedness. This is some of the things now I'm saying to myself, what are they trying to distract us from? Uh, I'm going to be honest. We got to figure this out because all of these court cases, all of this drama going on, these celebrities being outed, um, they have our attention. But what is happening in the background, y'all? Make sure that you guys are preparing on your on everyday life because, okay, I'm doing trending topics and I'm just going to keep it real. One of my epiphanies, you know, going through this tragedy with my uncle and also, you know, just having a working on a deep embedded relationship with God. I'm like, man, we can't be just talking about celebrity topics. We have to be really focused on what we're going to do to survive. Because when we get into the migrant issue, you're going to realize that this thing seems not only like a replacement, but we're going to be fighting for not only our resources, we're going to be fighting for our safety out this motherfucker because these damn migrants are beating up the police. Okay. So I, I'm dead serious. When we talk about these topics and you're tuned in with Grace Levi, it's for entertainment and educational purposes only, but I'm here to make you think. That's why it's called Enlightenment Talk. That's the basis of our channel. Okay. So if you're here for that, hit the like button because that's what we're going to do. So again, Young Thug, an update on his case, something that is a little, that's important. Young Thug ID'd as alleged gunman in 911 call played at YSL Rico trial. Now, I was watching this and I was just watching the argument part where she was trying to get the evidence in. And I had some other stuff to do, so I didn't know if they got the evidence in. But this is what they were trying to play. Um, I heard the three minute phone call. The alleged person was a neighbor that called and said that, hey, her neighbor came in saying that Young Thug is at her house and he just shot somebody and she's like it's not an emergency but i'm afraid y'all gotta go check on the girl because she's there with her mother and daughter so it was an argument about bringing this type of third party information in but it did specifically said that this was young thug who did the shooting so young thug has been identified as alleged gunman in a call to the 911 play during the young the uh, ysl rico trial during the travel on tuesday Prosecutors played a recording from a 911 call made September 11th, 2023 by an unidentified woman. In the call, the woman first identified thugs as the shooter of a mutual friend that clarifies that she was just relaying the information from an unspecific someone and wanted to get the details on record with the police. Okay. They came by my house and told me that the guy who shot somebody named was Young Thug. Whoever that's supposed to be, the woman said in the record, while also making clear that the injured friend was not an intimate danger. Okay, so let's play this real quick because it was more than one 911 call. And I want to make sure that I was talking about the right one because this one is a little bit different. And the other one was talking about a young lady in in the house with um, young thug with the with the um mother and the child. Six one nine. So then what's the edge of the emergency? It's it's not an emergency. The guy that shot the guy with our please on the exit. He's in my place and I'm a partner and she's panicking. She don't know what to do. Okay, what's going on? That's a guy, I guess somebody must have shot somebody over where I said over here in Somerdale. But you cannot come to my house or to my house or Okay, ma'am. When, when I come to your location, I just need to know what's going on. Was somebody shot recently? Yes, about five police said where I go. Okay, what's the location? It's over here on Cleveland Avenue. Cleveland Avenue, what else, ma'am? I need numbers or two cross streets. Oh, 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 hey, Bill. Oh, hey, Bill. Oh, hey, Bill, in Cleveland Avenue? Yes. I don't want to talk loud. I don't want to get nobody get myself in no trouble. That's fine. Okay. You said call it, you say, okay, the male is inside of what home? 
my friend a partner and she panicking she don't know what to do okay that's fine that's fine okay but she got her, her mom and her baby now okay okay all right and what's the what's the to call her What's the what's the number? Up, up. We stay in the uh, new uh, townhouses in Somerdale, and uh, she stay in Building C. But I'm not for sure what the apartment number is. But she stay in Building C. When you come around, to come through the gate. Okay, so so who was shot? I, I have no idea, baby. I got punched. I can't tell y'all that. I don't know. All that I know, she came right, she came to my house and told me that the guy that shot, that shot somebody in that young or whatever it's supposed to be, shot somebody and then see the guy is in her house. So I don't know how y'all can do that. I'm trying to get her out the house, but she wants the phone now. Okay. All right. Okay. So you saying the female that won't answer the phone? Uh-uh. I just tried to call her phone. All right. We're going to stop it right there. It was about a three-minute clip, and I was correct. The way the article explained it was not correct. It was, it sounded ridiculous, but um, yeah, that's specifically what happened allegedly. So it was a neighbor. So allegedly the girl ran into the neighbor home and then ran back into the house and then did not pick up the phone. So she is a legend that young thug was the shooter. So this is third party information. I'm still have to verify if the actual judge allowed it in. Okay. They probably have it because they hear the arguments. We hear the arguments before the actual evidence is actually allowed so you when y'all watching the young thug case y'all will see like they'll tell the um they'll tell the jurors to leave and we still can hear them arguing about the evidence so i want to verify specifically that this is submissible evidence because that's what they were arguing about okay y'all already know we're going to give you the real we're not going to just give you the face news like what they like to do and it'd be half-ass information okay so Would you like to learn a brand new and innovative way to invest your extra money that has a low barrier to entry and low competition? What if I told you that it is a guaranteed method to get up to 18 to 20% return on your investment? Tax lien and deed purchasing is the only way to get into the real estate market through the back door. No credit and no loans needed. This method isn't commonly taught and therefore the competition is very low for now. Put together a 14 hour info packed course which will teach you everything you'll need to know to get started. Learn at your own pace, step-by-step, -step, guided video and aids to start you on the TLC deed investment process. The course offers many learning tools for new investors, helping ensure you safely invest in tax liens and deeds. Contact us today and join the buyback team.